Hi, I'm Lydia Yingling. And I'm Autumn Osha. And, and this is Blue Jay Journal TV. It's true Americans love their cars. However, the number of trained and qualified mechanics has dropped dramatically. What is being done right here in Washington to fill these positions? Autumn OSHA reports. The demand for qualified people to fix vehicles is growing. However, there are more jobs than workers to fill them. But why? Kids are a lot different than when I grew up. I grew up as one of those kids that took the lawnmower apart, and got in trouble for it, but I learned a lot from that. Learned how to use tools, I helped dad on the farm helped him on his truck, helped grandpa build my own bicycle, and fixed my own toys that I broke when I was a little kid, but that got me to the point where I could use tools. People don't do that anymore. It, it, you don't see those tools. They look almost unnatural in, in some of the students' hands, some of them. Uh, others pick it up pretty quick, but uh, I think that does form a gap. We live in a society where children are more comfortable with an electronic device than a wrench. That helps explain the skills gap in automotive technology but Dan Brinkman is working to fix that in his program at Four Rivers Career Center. We go in depth and when you come out of here you got a very firm understanding if, if you apply yourself. They've taught me a lot about how about what I need to know to work on them and they've really really told us a lot about being a good employee getting us ready to actually work not just teaching us how to do the stuff. The automotive technology program does more than teach the mechanics of tomorrow. It helps students discover themselves. I've had that person in here where they've never had any confidence in themselves. They've never, they've never seen any kind of pride in their own work. One guy in particular, his junior year, you got you got a feel for the fella. He watched his feet when he walked. He's just a little bit of an outsider, but he found something here that lit a spark into him, and he found something to be proud of. And it's not just him. It's a, it's almost every one of them. They walk differently. There's a confidence in them. Even though statistics show there is a lack of qualified automotive service technicians and mechanics, instructors like Dan Brinkman are working towards filling those jobs with skilled and confident workers. I am Autumn Osha reporting. I love my curly hair. I never would have thought I'd get made fun of for being different. I like going to school and studying. I never thought I would get called a nerd. I have always liked my freckles. I never thought I would get picked on because of them. I thought I had picked my friends wisely. I never would have thought they would be the ones to put me down. Looking back, I never thought small things like these would push me to end my life. Don't let this be your story. Clearly driving is an important aspect of an American lifestyle. Many teens look forward to getting their license and having a newfound freedom. But all too often, teenagers learn the importance of wearing a seatbelt the hard way. Brendan Randolph has the story. I thought I was gonna die when I hit the glass. It was, it was terrifying, like, I couldn't believe it was happening. On September 15th, WHS students Dory Key and Alexis Roy got into a car crash. Dory was buckled up, Alexis was not. On the way to school on St. John's Road, we uh, were driving and a guy in a white truck came up behind us and passed us. It kind of startled me. I was going too fast to begin with and I went around a turn and my car went on two wheels. It freaked me out and I overcorrected. I was kind of thinking we were rolling because I was like, well, why is she above me? Why is she in the air? It doesn't make sense. I remember covering my face because I'm feeling the pressure of my face hitting the glass. <sighs> I'm just speechless because how scary it was. She went to the air and her face went through the windshield and then it was just like glass was raining down. Wearing your seatbelt is so important. I wish I listened to my parents and wore my seatbelt. It benefited a lot. It really saved me from going through the windshield. 
and I could have died if I went through the windshield. It honestly changed my whole perspective on how I drive. You don't know when you're going to get in a car accident. This is Brennan Randolph reporting for Blue Jay Journal TV. The Franklin County United Way supports 53 various agencies countywide. Programs like Grace's Place and Buddies Not Bullies are directly impacted by the United Way. To continue their work, the United Way has several fundraising efforts throughout the year. One of these fundraisers is the annual United Way door-to-door -door drive. Kate Freitag has the details. 1,000 houses, 100 students, 50 pizzas, all for one goal, to give back to the community of Franklin County. I think it just feels good to help somebody else. Like every day at school we're doing homework and we're doing all these other things and we not always focus on what is going on in the community around us. <laughs> on September 27th, Washington High School students had the opportunity to do just that through the United Way door-to-door -door drive. We met in the CJB and then um, people from the community come in to be drivers. Uh, so the kids are connected with the drivers and they load up and they go out. The students, the participants jump out and they go knock on doors and they collect money and they say thank you. And then that obviously helps um, fund the programs in our community. This year, students collected over $6,000. The money collected benefits local organizations that work behind the scenes to make a big difference. We serve uh, quite a few students in our district with our food backpack programs. That's a program where students who won't have enough food to eat on the weekend, they take a bag home with them and then they have food to eat during the weekend. Not only does the United Way affect charitable agencies, it also impacts the lives of the volunteers. I do United Way in order to help people around me and get more involved in my community and I just feel good doing it knowing that I'm getting to help others. I like directly interacting with the community because it's not something that you can that we get to do every day especially as high school students so getting to go door to door and interact with the community members it it feels good to know that you're doing something good. To do your part by donating or volunteering visit franklincounty.uw.org. If you have not donated to United Way, make a donation. Super easy. <laughs> For Blue Jay Journal TV, this is Kate Freitag reporting. This summer, several Blue Jay Journal TV staff members, including myself, attended Traction in Columbia, Missouri. But what exactly is Traction? We brought back this story so you could learn a little more about the program. It is the most absolute dangerous thing um, that we're letting 15-year-olds do is get out on the roadway. I was 15 and no one had their seatbelts on. All we did was meet someone and that car was fine and she just overcorrected and then flipped and then we flipped and I flew out 100 feet, 100 stitches in my face. There's an 85% chance of you living if you wear your seatbelt. If you had uh, an 85% chance of winning a lottery when you play, Traction is a traffic safety leadership conference where we bring in schools and teens to uh, empower, the, or empower them to uh, make changes in their community and their schools. Let me first ask you, did you have any fun? Yeah. My favorite thing about Traction is that, you know, the first day we do get to kind of form together as a team, especially being a newer team put together, it's good to build that up so that we can work in the most productive way on day two when we learn about more serious stuff. The main thing we want students to be able to do is work as a team cohesively to essentially go back to their school and, and create the best highway safety program that they can. Okay, let's go ahead and roll. Last year when we did the seatbelt checks, 50% of people weren't wearing their seatbelt and that's 30% less than the state average and I find that disappointing because I expect more from my school. I want to be able to go to this conference, get as much education on this topic as I can, and bring it back to my school to show the most effective way to get people to start wearing their seatbelts. This is all your fault. Oh, someone help me! My dad's been a firefighter for about 25 years. Um, he was also an EMT for a little bit. So the crash scene is actually what made me tear up because when the firefighter was interacting with the accident victim, I was like, oh, that's my dad. Some days he comes home and he's real quiet and I know that something happened the night before and I was like, man, it's really hard to watch that because I know that's what my dad goes through. Today it really hit me like why we're here. We're saving people. We are helping create less grief. We are helping, you know, make people more responsible. And um, I don't know, that's just powerful. 
Students leave here changed people. They do. They leave, they leave here changed people. Highway safety is never a priority to any teens, um, but when they leave here, it's like it is ingrained in them. Not wearing a seatbelt is definitely a problem, and it makes me really frustrated because why would you not? It's so easy to just buckle it. It's not hard, and it could save your life. It could save someone else's life. Spread the word. Wear your seatbelt. Arrive alive. It's the best choice you can make. Lydia and I would like to thank you for watching the show. Don't forget, you can catch us online at www.bluejayjournal.com. That's right, our website has a lot to offer. So until then, have a great day, Washington. Washington.